Right, this problem is slightly different um, in that they give us the angle and the area of the sector, and they're asking us to figure out the radius. So this is another one. We know it has to do with area of a circle. So we can start by writing down the area equation. Area equals pi r squared. But then we quickly realize that unlike most of these other problems, we don't have r and we don't have the area. So we're not going to use this equation initially. So we say, well, what other equations do we know about area and sectors? And it's simply that, oh, the area of a sector equals the fraction of that sector times the full area of the circle. And then we can start putting some things in here. So they tell us the area of the sector is 20 over 9 pi. 20 over 9 pi. And we say, do we know the fraction of the circle in question? Well, they tell us this is 80 degrees. So the fraction of the circle must be 80 over 360. So the only thing we don't know is the area. So we're going to find the area this way using this equation. So the way to get area by itself is we multiply by the inverse, the reciprocal here. If 80 over 360, we multiply by the opposite of that, 360 over 80 on both sides. So if we do that, that will cancel this and leave me with just area. So the area of the full circle is going to equal 360 over 80 times 20 over 9 times pi. And again, it comes down to simplification. We might look at this and realize, oh, these zeros will cancel. We're dividing by 10 on both sides. We might look and say 36 and 9. 9 goes into 36 four times. So I can simplify this to 4 over 8 times 20 over 1. So I divided this by 9 and got 1, and this by 9 and got 4. And now I may be more comfortable solving this. 4 times 20 is 80. 8 times 1 is 8. So I get 80 over 8, which is 10. And that pi didn't go away. So my full area of the circle is 10 pi. Great. The whole goal of this was to find the radius of the circle. So now I can go to this equation. I know my area. Now I can find my radius. So the area is 10 pi, which equals pi r squared. And now I want to solve for r. The pi's cancel on each side. So I get 10 equals r squared. So that means simply that r is the square root of 10. And that doesn't simplify, so that's my radius. And that's my answer. And I can check it if I really like. I can take this radius, plug it back into my area equation. When I do that, I'll get 10 pi for my area. And then I can go through and do the rest of this. Say, OK, 10 pi is the full circle times 80 over 360. And I'll get the same thing. I'll get this area of the sector if I do that. So that's how I do this with an equation method. Let's look at how to do this proportionally. So proportionally, it's very similar. We say we don't know the full area of the circle. It's not given to us. But we do know that 80 degrees, this much, represents this area, which is 20 over 9 pi. So the question is, if 80 represents 20 over 9 pi, what is the full circle area? What does 360 represent? So we're going to solve for this. So we cross multiply. 80 times x is 80x. 360 times this will be 360 times 20 over 9 pi. And I want to solve for x. So I would divide each side by 80 or multiply by 1 over 80 if you prefer. So I get x equals 360 times 20 over 80 times 9 pi. This is the same cancellation we did before. The tens cancel. I can look at 36 and 9 and call that 4 times 20 over 8 times 1, just like before. Like this 36 and this 9 divide them both by 9. I get 80 over 8, which again is 10 pi. So once I know the full area of the circle is 10 pi, I again say, okay, the full area is 10 pi, which is pi r squared. That's the area formula. Pi's cancel, so r squared equals 10, r equals the square root of 10. You get the same answer whether you do proportions or equation. Your choice, what you find uh, more useful. So I know it went faster than that. You can obviously pause it if uh, it was too quick. But this is how, this is one way to find the radius of a circle, or two ways. So until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.